the most endangered whales in the world, North Atlantic right whales, swim near the coast of New England on their seasonal migration route. Unfortunately, shipping lanes into and out of Boston cut directly across prime feeding areas for the whales. Increasing ship traffic threatens the whales with lethal collisions, and with fewer than 400 left, every whale death diminishes the species' chances of survival. You can send out planes and boats to watch for whales, but not in bad weather or at night, so listening for whales is a better method than watching for them. Chris Clark at Cornell University found that we could listen for and detect them. The idea was to put hydrophones on moorings and relay the captured audio via satellite. The problem was that mooring lines are attached to buoys floating on the sea surface, which are buffeted by winds and waves. The buoys yank the mooring lines up and down. When that happens, the sound of water whooshing past the hydrophones overwhelms all other ambient sounds, including whale calls. I was referred to it sort of as the Dixie Cup telephone problem of moorings, which is you've got a, tight, a taut system. Uh, mooring is almost like a kite, where you can picture the kite up at the top. That's the surface buoy, and you're down below holding onto it. You've got a this gentle sort of catenary arc of, of cable. Well, if you flick on the kite or a string, you can see the, the impulse run up the string. And if you have a Dixie cup at the at two ends of the taut string, it's sort of the same thing. You can make noise at one end, and it transmits through that inflexible member to the other end. And so having uh, cable in the, in the mooring uh, also means that any kind of mechanical noise clunking around uh, gets gets transmitted down to the hydrophone. So that's a second source of noise in, other than the sloshing. Hydrophones with the ability to pick up North Atlantic right whale calls existed. The Cornell lab had devised algorithms to distinguish whale calls from other ambient sounds. A way to beam calls to the Cornell lab existed. A way to inform ships existed. All the pieces were there, except a way to keep the hydrophones quiet. To overcome this challenge, engineers at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution designed a remarkable mooring line that has two separate segments. The top one can stretch twice its length without breaking. It accommodates all the strain and motion from the surface buoy going up and down with waves. It is separated from the bottom segment by a floating subsurface sphere. The bottom segment remains taut and still, a stable, quiet platform for the hydrophone. A company called Accelerate Energy wanted to build an offshore port to deliver liquefied natural gas. To receive a license to do that, the company agreed to pay to build and maintain a 10-buoy system in the Boston Shipping Channel. Data is relayed to a command and control center at Cornell, where trained analysts verify right whale calls, and then ships are alerted to slow down and look out for whales. A right whale detection system, or as we call it, an AB, an auto buoy, um, is comprised of a surface buoy, it's basically a big piece of foam, uh, about five or six feet in diameter, and all the electronics and the communication systems are bolted, if you will, right onto that buoy. So all the things that broadcast to Cornell, um, everything that powers the system is on the buoy. Attached to the buoy is the stretch hose. It's kind of like a big elastic band, or gumby hose we call it. It's this big stretchy material made out of uh, vulcanized rubber. And Attached to the stretch hose is the subsurface sphere. So the sphere is just one big aluminum sphere that's um, filled with air. So there's a few things that are in between the sphere and the anchor, and most notably that's the uh, hydrophone. So that's what's doing all the listening. And believe it or not, the hydrophone is connected electrically to the buoy. There's connectors that run up the stretch hose, run right through the sphere, run up the stretch hose at a very specific helix angle. Um, which was designed by a Huey engineer. And um, so there was a direct path electrically to the buoy, which is very unique. And when we're ready and we're on station, usually it's less than 400 feet from site. We lift the anchor off the deck, which is roughly 2,000 pounds. Air weight weighs about 1,500 pounds in the water. And when we're on site, the captain says okay, and we go ahead and pull the, the line, which then lets go of the anchor and the anchor quickly falls to the bottom and pulls the buoy 
uh, right to the site. Here's how the mooring system works. The hoses isolate the, the surface buoy motion. The surface buoys are up in very rough seas at times. Off Boston, they're seeing uh, during some winter storms, uh, 10 meter waves, 30, uh, 35 foot waves, and uh, quite nasty conditions. The hoses stretch sufficiently that uh, the, the mooring below the stretch hose uh, doesn't move 10 meters. It's actually static in the water. The newly engineered mooring system enables the hydrophones to hear clearly, and that gives people the ability to listen for whales and help protect them. And the moorings could have other uses. The Department of Homeland Security is interested in using them to detect vessels and protect harbors.